Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist and Mezco's 112 Collective line has finally made it out of the port strike limbo. While unfortunately missing its gimmicky January 12 launch date, the line's debut figure, Batman from The Dark Knight Returns, is now in collector's hands in a variety of colorways. And I've got all the regular ones here in this video. The black and white version was only available as a promo piece at Toy Fair 2015 and remains out of my reach. If you have one, you're on the list. The first 112 Collective box is a doozy with a slick translucent slipcover that takes parts of the box art along with it when you pull it off. This also allows for the three variants to have personalized packaging while all using the same cardboard box. Clever girl. A magnetic flap reveals the Dark Knight within, as well as most of his accessories. Due to the nature of the parts loadouts, every variation of 112 Batman actually has a unique main tray. This must be interesting to somebody! Okay, enough about the packaging. The aim of 112 Collective is to take the best qualities of high-end 6 scale pieces and half-size them down to the 12th scale, in which humans are generally 6 inches tall rather than 12 inches tall. This was apparently a passion project of Mezco's main dude, and it shows. The elder Batman has a properly meatloafed buck with a well-crafted soft goods costume stretched on top. While the threading comes off a little too thick in imagery, in person to my human eyes, I find it looks quite slick. And the cut of the material causes the suit to not only adhere over some of the finer musculature of the body sculpt, but also not resist too much in posing and playtime. Also, the cape is magnificent. See how it hangs? See all those natural folds? I'll talk more about that in a bit. As for sculpted and painted pieces, Batman's got some nice and simple boots and gloves that totally get the job done. His utility belt's a very soft durometer plastic piece that, somehow, also holds a fairly tight paint job despite being really bendy and flexible. The head of the bat is a proper short-eared Frank Millard scowl with a copious chin and tiny gritted teeth that are picked out nice and crisply on my copy of the figure along with his beady white eyes. I admit I'm not a huge devotee for The Dark Knight Returns, but I enjoyed Peter Weller in the animated rendition, and Ben Affleck's upcoming Do You Bleed has given me a whole new level of unintentional endearment to this hard old version of Gotham's greatest vigilante. 112 Batman's got a ball-jointed neck, so he can look around, he can tilt his head just a little bit, he can nod just a little bit, but he's also got a throat hinge, so he can look all the way up, he can glower all the way down, and in tandem with all this, there is also a forward and backward hinge that connects his cowl to his body, so that you can get, like, the full hunch going on. That's pretty cool. His shoulders are connected by a ball joint to the chest, which allows for some roll and shrug, and this can end up looking a little bit weird, like especially up here, but yo, check it out. I fixed it. The cape is a real wonderful thing. If you get it down here, it looks a bit more human. Uh, there's also a pin disc joint inside the thing above the bicep and tricep, and it's really tight. Uh, holds position quite well. That ball joint in here allows for the forward and backward motion. He's got uh, a bicep swivel, and when you swivel his bicep, oh man, check out how the musculature moves under the soft goods costume. It's delightful. He's got a double jointed elbow, but you don't get a double jointed range of movement out of it. The cuff here of the glove is a harder plastic. It's not like dead hard, it's got some squish, but even working both joints, that's about how far you can safely bend the elbow. Any farther, and not only does it not work, but uh, I've heard from a T16 Skyhop and Type V3 that on their versions of the toy, messing with the elbow too much caused the elbow uh, joint to snag up the fabric of the sleeve, and then uh, the sleeve ends like inside the cuff. On theirs, it got pulled all the way up to here, getting caught up inside that stuff. That hasn't happened to mine, I haven't even seen the start of that happening to mine, but be careful with that. Don't try to overdo the elbow. You're only going to get about that much out of it. That's a bit of a bummer. And about a week after I filmed that, oh no, it's starting to happen. See, it's riding up. You can see the actual hinge there. Um, I noticed that basically, suddenly, I guess like a microfiber got sucked into the elbow joint. I was like, hey, what's that? I bent the elbow back and fadunk, this started just happening. Uh, it stopped here. Um, it's a little bit frayed on this end. I'm going to try to, to pull it back down. I've been told by uh, Nick T16 Skyhop he got this fixed up by just applying, in his words, a lot, a lot of heat to this uh, glove cuff and wrist joint to get them out, slide the uniform back over, plug them back in, etc, etc. So I'm going to give all that a shot and we'll see what happens. 
Success! He has straight up fig art's wrists with uh, a swivel and a hinge, and the hinge can be swiveled as well, so it can bend in different axes. There are two joints inside the torso, uh, one here and one here. They're both ball joints, and they work real great. Uh, like, the huge amount of crunch and arch and tilt on this guy is wonderful. Uh, but when you're working with those, the belt here tends to start crawling up towards his nipples, like, you know, an old man's belt would. So you gotta pull it down here, get it over the uh, underpants, and that'll keep it in place for a good little while until it starts crawling up again. The whole outfit, aside from the belt, like the actual body sock, even this uh, heat vinyl applied symbol on his chest, like it all stretches around the torso and body and arms and everything really well. Like the most stressed I've seen this uniform get is if I bend his arm all the way up here then uh, here it starts stretching a little bit, but there's just enough give in this material and the cut of this costume that I really don't feel like I'm gonna see any damage to it anytime soon. I mean, we'll see, and I'll update if there is anything, but uh, it feels really durable and cut for play, which is just what I wanted. Like, you can twist this guy, have him look up, and you can even see his ribcage in there a little bit. And this, this outfit moves with it uh, very naturally. I think it also helps that the briefs are a separate uh, garment stitched over top of the gray body sock because when you move his hips, which have a full range of motion, um, the briefs stay in place and they don't get uh, you know, too misaligned even if I'm starting to try to do it myself. The only thing that gets misaligned really is the utility belt. The hips have got a pretty good range. Uh, they can go all the way forward so he could sit in a hypothetical Batmobile uh, or bat, bat cycle or chair. His Van Damme score He's kind of a mid-range C plus .78. Um, he's an old man, though. I wasn't expecting too much out of his uh, ability to do the splits. He's got thigh swivels, which once again uh, get some of that musculature moving around under the fabric. He's got double-jointed knees that are all clicky and tight and work like a charm. Like, these these are not the elbows. These double-jointed knees uh, are gorgeous and uh, look super natural. Well, they look super natural, not ghostly. Gotta watch my nomenclature there. <laughs> His boots have got a cut, so they can turn left and right. Uh, this boot even, uh, you can straight up pull it off here to see how the cut works. It's a peg! And now Batman's got, well, he's got a story to tell. The ankles have got a big hinge here for forward and backwards hingeability, and there's an ankle rocker design, but this is all you're gonna get out of that ankle tilt. Like that little bit of wiggle. It's not very functional, it's not very helpful, and if you take a look at the sculpt, like, look at all the cut divots in the sculpt here to make room for ankle movement. Uh, like, it's helping here, like, that bit in the back makes sense, this allows his, uh, his foot to, to point forward like this, but as far as side-to-side -side motion, like, the amount of, you know, gouging in here doesn't accomplish anything. I really hope the ankle tilts on 112 Collective can get, you know, looked at uh, for the next figure, because these are super disappointing and probably my least favorite part of the whole figure. As for my favorite part of the whole figure, let's talk about the cape. Uh, you've noticed how this cape hangs real easily. Like, there's not much puff. Like, if I put it over his shoulders, you get maybe a little bit of that action figure, small-scale cape puff here, but it still looks to me, like, rather natural, all things considered. Um, and if you look at him from the back, like, this cape hangs so naturally. And if I start, you know, swooshing it around and pushing it around and stuff, it always ends up with these what I call curtain lines. Like, the way that a cape is drawn in a comic book, the, it hangs naturally in that kind of vertical folded fashion. How does all this work? Well, if you look on uh, this end of the cape, you can see there is a heat-sealed vinyl strip. And I think that this is what's weighing the cape down. There are a couple more in here. This, this fat bit at the bottom is helping the cape hang naturally, it's helping gravity gently pull down on the cape, and uh, up here where it starts to taper and get thinner, I think that is what is causing the cape to have the natural curtain folds. And these things are all throughout the cape at nearly every single tip. In fact, every single tip. Hang on, let's take a look. Yeah, every tip of Batman's uh, bat cut, Batman bat cut cape uh, have got one of these vinyl wedge strip tapering things on them. The middle one even has one running the, the entire way up the seam. I never noticed that before. So I think this is what's causing the cape to work so well. That's a really good bit of design. It's something that I want other toy companies to like take note of because y'all are on notice. This is, hang on. This is the best action figure cape I have seen like to date and 
if Mezco were to start selling capes like this on their own in the 1.6 or 112 scale, like, I'd buy one. I have an SH Figure Arts toy called Common Rider Eternal, who is begging for a cape like this. Uh, if there was a single reason to buy this toy, it would be to experience the cape. Certainly that's not the whole price point boiled down, but the cape is, to me, the high point of this whole figure. Incredibly impressive toy engineering and something that Mezco not only needs to keep doing, but other companies need to start considering their own iterations of it. 112 Batman has a host of accessories, starting off with an alternate head that looks equally as angry as the other one, just with his mouth closed. To be honest, I'm not sure which one would scare me more in a dark alleyway. The head swap's fairly simple and unthreatening ball socket pop. And similarly unthreatening are the hand swaps. Batman's fists can be exchanged for open hands, and the durometer of the plastics involved is perfect. Pulling the hands off of the pegs is quite easy, but they grip strongly enough through a set of ribbing to not come off unless you really mean it. So, they come off easy, but they stay on well. It's like sciences are butting heads, yet their antlers are interlocking into a beautiful jigsaw puzzle of this toy doesn't scare me and doesn't frustrate me. There's a third pair of hands, which are fists that have four batarangs apiece, all Wolverine style between the clenched fingers. Unfortunately, I've not seen any way to remove the batarangs, so 112 Batman is always operating at maximum shred, telling them kids to use their brains and not the guns. The fourth and final pair of hands are general gripping hands with a bit of a trigger finger on the right one. One thing they can hold is the grappling hook, which looks alright. It's got a nice sculpt, great silver paint, and a big old grey string attached. Unfortunately, it comes off feeling a little fragile, has no moving parts on the grapple claw itself, and can only really hang limply for the most part. There's no joints, it can't claw onto things, and it honestly feels like it's gonna break if I actually hang Batman from it. The rest of the figure accessories vary somewhat, depending on which version of 112 Batman you've got. The regular black and grey version comes with a pistol, along with an alternate left boot that's got a working holster added on. The boot swap is just as easy and solid as the hand swaps, and the pistol looks and feels great. It's just... I have trouble posing Batman with a gun. I know it's right out of the Dark Knight Returns, but... I don't know, man. If you got the blue and yellow symboled previews exclusive version of the toy, there's no pistol or alternate boot. Instead, you get an additional utility belt for Batman's thigh and a friggin' sniper rifle. Once again, right out of the comic book. This was basically his grapnel gun. The additional belt is great, made of the same material and covered in little nubs to help it grip onto the soft goods of Batman's pant legs without digging in too deep or wrecking the stitching. The sniper rifle's just like the pistol in that it looks great, but it feels friggin' weird to put on Batman despite many correct justifications. Unfortunately, the strap's not got enough length or flex to go all the way across his chest. By the way, all this stuff can go into an included Ziploc bag if you're ditching your packaging. A Ziploc bag that appears to have no issue with saying, We saw this idea on a Figma release and thought it was cool. I can dig that. All the 112 Batmen also include a big, bold bat signal base with a peg for establishing a solid boot sole connection. It's to the toy's credit that this stand isn't entirely necessary outside of the most extreme poses. Do be careful with it as the bat symbol is painted on the top side surface and could get scratched if you lay into it with friction. It's not entirely clear in the instructions, but if you push up underneath the foot peg, you can pop it out the top and replace it with a clear C-clip armature stand for more airborne poses. It's very solid, and the C-clip holds Batman better than I expected, though it can mess a bit with his utility belt's position. A four-wire cape armature can attach onto this assembly and allow for an approximation of that classic high-end wire-in-the-cape kind of stuff. Unfortunately, the thing is ridiculously hard and puzzling to work with. The little cape clips on the end of the wires are static pieces that you're supposed to flex, and I really would have preferred to see tiny spring-loaded clasps instead. Also, the wires often feel, somehow, too short for several posing ideas I have, and rather frustratingly tend to spin around freely in their individual base connections while I'm trying to do stuff. You can get some cool display options out of this whole setup, but it is incredibly tricky and annoying to use, and is by far the most disappointing aspect of the package to me. Anyway, let's lay out all these different color schemes. The regular retail version comes in black and gray with the big bat chest symbol, and includes the pistol and alternate holster boot along with all the regular accessories. The previews exclusive version that Diamond shipped out is in classic light blue and gray colors, and is the only version with the yellow oval chest symbol. He does not have the pistol or holster boot, but instead includes the sniper rifle and additional thigh strap. 
The Mezco Direct Exclusive version, which you had to order from Mezco's own site months ago, comes in a dark blue and gray that feels kinda like it references the animated version of The Dark Knight Returns, if not a simple fusion of the other two versions of the toy, and at the time of this recording has become sorta of ridiculously hard to find. As for accessories, the Mezco Direct version includes everything. The pistol, the holster boot, the sniper rifle, and the extra thigh belt. I haven't got the Toy Fair exclusive promo version that came in black and white, but he did not come with any of the unique accessories. So no pistol, no holster boot, no sniper rifle, and no extra thigh belt. All he has going for him is monochromality and being rare. As for which colorway looks the best, I went in expecting to resonate the most with the black and gray regular retail version. The previews exclusive version looked way better in hand than I expected, but I find myself constantly looking back and forth between the regular retail Batman and the Mezco Direct Batman, because I'm one of those kids that listen to Neue Deutsche Hertha and thinks that dark colors are just cooler. I think if Mezco Direct had a yellow oval, I'd call it the winner for reminding me so much of the Peter Weller animated version, and specifically the first part of that two-part thing. But for now, with them both having the big fat chest symbol, my fave is the man in black. If you're watching this video right now, you're probably stuck choosing between the black and gray retail and the light blue and gray previews version, because the Mezco Direct and the Toy Fair ones are hitting aftermarket prices that I don't think you should be paying unless you think this is like the best toy you've ever seen. I have a big grand gush pent up in my head about this release. A ridiculous piece of shill tier complimentary ramble that may actually give you verbal diabetes, so let me lay out the negatives first. For all the great interplay between the sculpt, costume, and articulation design, the elbows are surprisingly weak in execution, and the sideways ankle tilts are a stunning disappointment, especially given the deep cuts in the boot sculpts to allow for that axis of movement. And speaking to the package on the whole, the grappling hook feels strangely unfinished, while the wire cape display armature is overcomplicated to the point of frustration. I will always take an unwired cape, especially this unwired cape, over anything that's got metal stitched right into it. And I like the idea of external wires, but without a whole lot of heavy direction and instruction on how to use the blasted thing, I find myself wishing that the wire piece had been trimmed from the final cost. To be honest, the figure is so effective and fun, I rarely want to dig into the box to use most of its extra parts, like fists and open hands and the swappable heads, and I, I feel really satisfied already. And that last critique, most definitely, is a pathetically veiled compliment. Mezco's opening 112 Collective Salvo has blown me away. They set out to bring the look and feel of high-end 1.6 scale down to the 112 scale world, and they not only succeeded, but blew the pants off of many 1.6 figures as far as accommodating actual hands-on playtime. This figure is aware that it is a toy, and actively wants to be treated like a toy, albeit a big kid's toy. So many high-end collectibles feel like they are not meant to be handled more than a handful of times, and in 2015 I simply do not have much patience for that line of design reasoning anymore. Don't get me started about rubber sleeves and skin shirts on friggin' Hot Toys releases. DON'T GET ME- Okay, okay, I'm getting myself started, I'll stop. This is a magnificent example of collector-priced action figure excellence, marred by a few unignorable faults, but carried by a brutally effective series of high points. The articulation feels great, and the suit plays with that articulation really well. The minimal paintwork is very well done, and the cape? This is the best action figure cloth cape I have seen to date. Other companies that produce soft good capes had better be taking notes on what Mezco did here. The use of vinyl strips for both weight and hang guidance is inspired. The only major fear I have is that, with this Dark Knight Returns Batman being a pet project of the top folks at Mezco, we may have already seen the peak of 112 Collective. This is a great figure, but there is room to grow, and I want to see this line friggin' soar. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and you can bet your bat butt that I've got a pre-order down for the next figure in the line, Judge Dredd. But let me say this, here and now. Mezco has the Breaking Bad license. Do the right thing. Introduce the Heisenberg element to the 112 Collective.